We've been asked, please, can you enter the field behind this, in front of the stage here, because we have a very, very large crowd, and there's more people coming downtown all the time. So can you please move into the field? Can anybody that can't hear, please, if you can hear up there, put up your hands. All right, okay, all right, okay. If you support Sean Quinn, put up your hands. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of egos on the stage here tonight, and I have to be very careful. And I, ha I want to insist that I'm pulling them up in no special order. They're only called up in the order that I, I've been given, and not in order of importance. Although, mind you, maybe the first man is a giant among us. He's a man that has supported our community all the time. He supports all the families around here. Father Brian Dorsey. Father Brian is a passionate priest based in Enniskillen, a noted author, newspaper columnist, broadcaster and preacher. He serves as rector of St. Gabriel's Retreat, the Grand. Father Brian has authored over 10 books, including a little bit of religion and a little bit of healing. And I want to give you, for you to give a Ballyconnell welcome to Father Brian Dorsey. Thank you. Thank you, Parik. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone else as well. Um, I'm going to talk calmly. I'm going to talk slowly, unusually for me. And I'm going to talk on behalf of the common man and woman of this country. I'd like you to listen carefully. And I'd like you to think about what I've said in a rational way, in a calm way, in an intelligent way. Because I know, as one of your own, we are not the mob that we are portrayed. I don't want them, whoever them is, to come away saying that we gathered here tonight shouting platitudes that made no difference. That would be no support to Sean Quinn, nor would it be a support to our community, because both are the same thing. And it's time that we realize that. That's why we're here this evening. I'd like mainly to ask a few questions. I am not an expert, and never was an expert on money. I have a vow of poverty, which means that I don't have money. And therefore, the money matters are beyond me. But what I do know is that I have a respect for institutions. And we must have a respect for institutions. And I find it difficult to respect an institution which slanders and criticizes and name calls a family in a court of justice while still pretending to be impartial in that court of justice. And if you ask me which of the two has the better respect for an institution, I will say I have every time. Mind you, I also have trouble with institutions. <laughs> this is me being silent. 
But the first way of showing respect for an institution is to ask honest questions when you think that institution is using the law to the detriment of justice. And whether it be a state law or a canon law, an institution which does that does not reserve respect. A loyal opposition is totally allowable. The main reason I'm here tonight is because as Christians and good neighbours, we have a right, a duty, to stand by our families and neighbours when they are in trouble. And nobody will take that away from us. I am fortunate enough to be a neighbour of the Quinn family and always have been. I went to school on a bus with many members of the Quinn family. I played with them and against them in football fields. We fought and we rowed, but we were proud of each other. That's what neighbours are for, and that's why we're here tonight. <laughs> we were brought up by decent, honest parents from nothing. And we never had anything. But I can tell you, they brought us a respect for family, for faith, for heritage, for country, and until now, law. But, the Quinn family, as you and I know, from the hard rocks of Timor, from the grainy soil of round here, they built an industry the like of which has never been seen in this country. When northern governments and southern governments would not give us a penny, when not a single one of them provided a job, it was Sean Quinn and his family who took up the battle and from the stony rocks gave us a living, a future, our respect, our family. <laughs> No government, no state, no court ever did that for us. We know who did, and we know to whom we are grateful. They were the architects, too, of a future, a respectable future for all of us. The houses that are around this country, the mortgages that have been paid, the emigration votes that didn't take people anymore, the local football clubs who have families here, the schools who have families, the restaurants, the hairdressers, the hotels, the thousands of people who are paying taxes. Why? Because Sean Quinn gave them the money to do it. And that's why. We know they never pretended to be anything bigger than they were that even though they may, may have had on paper money, you could always meet them for a cup of tea and a chat. And you could always see them where they wanted to be, at a football match, at a funeral, at a wake, helping people, at a place that you and I always meet together. <clears throat> they are people. They are the people we know and respect. And I don't like anybody casting aspersions on a family that they haven't even met and telling them what kind of people they are. I know what they are, and they're not that kind of people. <laughs> We're here tonight to gather our thoughts respectfully, with dignity, because we have a case. We don't have all right on our side, but we have enough right to deserve respect. And that's what we're claiming here tonight. As Nelson Mandela said, you gather the people of influence around so that you can have all your milk in the one bucket. 
That's what we want tonight. <laughs> and I have a few questions that I would like somebody to ask or answer because I don't know. It seems to me, as an observer, that until Anglo put his greedy fingers on Sean Quinn, we had the best company in Europe. So how can they say that it was Sean Quinn who brought down the Anglo? It was not. It was Anglo who brought down Quinn. <laughs> As an ordinary simple for man, man let me tell you this. I just want to know a few central questions that we need to ask, and it is this. Has anyone said that the accounts which were presented to Sean Quinn were authentic and audited and correct and honest? If they were, would Sean Quinn be in the trouble he is today if that were the case? Who was it who, who produced the wrong accounts by billions. Who was it that did that? I would ask that as the first question, not as the last question to be asked. That is a central question. And if the books are cooked or are, are inaccurate or deliberately inaccurate or even not deliberately inaccurate, no man has a right to take my property under false pretenses. <laughs> So I want to know, where were the regulators, where were the auditors, where were the banks? Were they acting entirely honestly? Well, if they're not, shouldn't it be them that's in the court, not Sean Quinn? <laughs> Second thing, did or did not the Anglo-Irish Bank have a system of share support? That is to say, did they loan money to many people, including Sean Quinn, to buy and support shares, to falsely update the level of shares? Did they or did they not? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but that's a question somebody should be answering. And it should be answered before you put Sean Quinn Jr. in jail, let me tell you. Yeah. That's yeah. Because anything that's based on illegal and unlawful documents is itself illegal and unlawful. Let me ask a third question. Why were both of those issues not answered and settled long before they started putting, the coming in and usurping a man's life's blood? Before they had answered those two questions, I want to know what system would attempt to say that that is justice? No system could say that is justice. Hadn't Sean Quinn a right to his assets as long and until it was proven that they were not his assets? Here, here. <laughs> Thirdly, Sean Quinn did not dispute the administration of his insurance business. Maybe he should. But he didn't dispute the administration of his business because he trusted the authorities to act justly. He was a man of his word himself. He expected others to be that too. He was wrong. He was not dealing with an honest group. They did not deal with him justly. And therefore... The, he, he now finds himself in a most precarious position because he tried to roll back from the injustices done against him. <clears throat> Lastly, justice is what we're about here. Justice and law are not the same thing. Many a legal system is totally unjust. And there's another man on the stage here tonight who sadly knows that better than most of us. This is, this is my last question. 
making Sean Quinn and his family bankrupt and prisoners of itself precludes and prevents that man from following the central case here. That's the strategy. That's what they've done. They want to make him bankrupt. They want to make to, to uh, sully his character so much that he doesn't have a right to ask the central question. I am not saying what way the central questions will be answered. I have asked them here tonight, and I do that with humility, that some system will answer those questions. But by making him bankrupt, he now finds it impossible to uh, take the central cases of justice that could clear his name. That, to me, is contrary to the European Convention of Human Rights and fundamental freedoms. And none of us should allow that to happen. <laughs> Finally, may I make a plea again? Hold your dignity. We have right to uphold. We will not name call. We will not reduce ourselves to the level of those opposing us. We will hold our dignity, the dignity that was given to us by being able to make a living from Sean Quinn. He brought peace to this country because he killed the oxygen of violence by giving us jobs, an economy, a future, and respect. I want to ask one, no, I want to make one plea. I want to make one plea. There is still time. Mind you, there's not much time. But I'm an eternal optimist. I believe in hope over despair. And surely there is enough dignity among the business people, among the credible legal people, and we have wonderful legal people in this country, and among the, the few enough politicians with guts. Surely to heavens, surely to heavens, surely to heavens, there is still a way to negotiate a settlement where Sean Quinn and his family could keep their house, their dignity, and give them some reward for the sacrifices they made for us. That's my plan. Uh, I've also been told to mention tonight that we have a, a large Galway contingent here as well, but I'm not going to go through every county. There's an awful lot of people from the length of Ireland. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is a local man. He's a Fermanagh man. He's Paul Corrigan. He's, or was, the next door neighbour back in, in Kalesha. Paul is a former chairman of the Fermanagh Council. And Paul is very, very well known around these parts. Put your hands together, please, for Paul Curry. Thank you very much, Father Brian. And Father Brian, if that's you saying that, then it's a pity you didn't prepare a speech tonight. <laughs> I don't know why I brought these flyers. They're to introduce these people behind me, but everyone, you know them. Sean Bylan was the Mead GA senior football manager. He was with Mead for 23 years. He won three league, eight province, and four all irons. He was the longest serving manager. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please, for Sean Bylan. Uh, Father Brian, people of Ballycowell, people of this area. The Apache Indians have a great saying, we are what we are, but we are what we were also. I come here tonight, no speech prepared. I come here as a free man. I thank the people who gave me the opportunity to be a free man. We talk about all the violence that would have taken place in our country over the last hundreds of years. More importantly, what took place the last 30, 40 years. And yet, what people have fought for, that right for freedom, for free speech, the right to make mistakes, the right to ask for forgiveness, the right to be an Irish man, proud to be an Irish man, a fellow Irish man, maybe a couple of hours down the road from here, 
but I feel as home here as I would in the village of Dunboyne. And I thank the people who have given me that chance. Why we're here tonight is not for show. We're here because it's right to be here. Sean Quinn, Sean Quinn Jr. is a Mount Joy J. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Quinn, Quinn Jr. and Qu Sean Quinn Sr. and their families, they are not thieves, they're not vagabonds, they're not people who don't care. They're not people who would walk on you. They are Irish people, proud Irish people, who have the guts or the balls, the ingenuity to create a better life for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people in this country. And we owe them a massive favor of thanks and gratitude and if we would not be here tonight, then we're not worthy to call ourselves neighbours, friends, or, more importantly, decent Irish men supporting their own people. Yeah. Father Brian, he spoke about the institutions, and he talked about respecting them and honouring them, and I agree with him. But the most important thing we have to remember is that governance, law, everything else, it's for the people and it's by the people. You've shown here tonight, and there were some terrible showers early on, that it didn't matter if it was absolutely pelting snow that you'd be here tonight because it's right to be here. Now what can we do? We can't go up to Mount Joy and pull Sean out of Mount Joy. <laughs> Fair point. Who says? <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I thought I was at a silent retreat there for a while. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is something very simple. Is to let Sean Jr. and his wife, his father and his mother, and everybody associated with them know that we support them. We're not afraid to be seen to support them. We wouldn't be fit to tie their laces with regard to creating opportunities for other people like they have done. We value what they have done. Hopefully it won't be too long to have the opportunity to do it again, because do it again, they will. Yeah. But what I do want you to do, let it be politicians, let it be members of Dáil Éireann, or the Shannad, or every, wherever it is, let them know we are not happy. We're not happy at all what was happening in this case. Every man in this country is entitled is entitled to justice. Justice, the decision was made before it got a chance in the court. He never got a chance to defend himself. And he's in jail. In the name of God, where are we going? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm humbled to be here tonight. I'm honored to be here tonight. If at the end of my days, I can face my maker like Sean Quinn can, then I know I'll be all right. Thanks for having me here tonight. The left door. The left door right here. Uh, as Father Brian said in the beginning, every argument is won by treating everybody with respect. And I suppose what we all feel is that that hasn't happened in this case. And Sean Quinn and the Quinn family at one time were the greatest entrepreneurs of all and suddenly they're labelled as being greedy and people that brought down the state. I can't help but look out here on this crowd and look at young people here and wonder 
if the Quinn Empire hadn't been built in this part of the country, how many of you would be here tonight? How many of these young children would be going to school here but going... <laughs> ...would be filling schools in London and New York and Sydney and Melbourne. So that's the contribution that has been made here. And he has made mistakes and he's acknowledged mistakes. But I think, like a lot of decent people in this country, I am uncomfortable with the fact that he wasn't given an opportunity, as he said he would do, is pay back the money that he did owe, which he was willing to do, the money that he said he owed, and he acknowledged that. I'm uncomfortable with the fact that the man who created most jobs in this area, real jobs that have lasted, is the first man to be kicked and taken down. And all the other people who owed much more money have never had a day in court. I'm uncomfortable with the fact that the regulator, the central bank, the accountancy firms, that all the others who are party to all of this seem to have been able to get on with our business. And there's only one group who seem to be carrying the can. That's not fair. Everybody has to have their day of justice. And I think like everybody else, we're all very uncomfortable with what has happened to a family like this. So I'm delighted to be here to show in some way support for the Quinn family. I hope their day of justice will come. I don't really know Sean Quinn that well. I know his brother Peter very well. Anytime we go down to Croke Park, we see the results of the entrepreneurial spirit and the creativity that the Quinns have brought to this community and to the GAA. And everywhere they went, the people and the institutions that they touched have been better as a result of it. Because Croke Park was rebuilt at a time when there wasn't 10 cranes above the Dublin skyline and nobody was building. But we had people and we had a man, we had an uchter on of coming Luke Lascale at that time, had the vision and the knowledge that the people would support him and that there was something there that was good about coming Luke Lascale, that we could build this magnificent stadium. And it's that spirit, it's that spirit that we see here tonight in Ballyconnell amongst the great crowd that we have here tonight. I know that Sean Quinn was not a particularly, he's not a red carpet man. You wouldn't see him at the opening of some great uh, film or so, at the premiere uh, in Dublin or in London, despite the fact he had the funds to do that. He was a, ma a very simple man, as Father Brian Darcy very eloquently put. But I remember a few years ago, at the height of his power, he did an interview with one of the papers. And I remember being struck by what he said. What he said was, I know that me and my family's future finance are financially secure, but I'm not going to sell up because I want to make sure that my employers can get the best wages and the best terms that they possibly can get. At that time, he could have sold out. The Quinn family could have sold out. At that stage, they had given cement at affordable prices to the ordinary man, insurance at affordable prices, and anybody who had a young fella who was after getting the license and was looking for insurance, it was Quinn's that they went to. Given health care, affordable prices to the ordinary man. At that stage, he was riding as high as he could have. He could have sold out to a multinational, but he knew had he done that, that it would have compromised so much that he had built up because he would have been handing his vision over to somebody else's vision that wouldn't understand the community that he came from. So he stayed on. And I have great respect for him having done that. So I'm not really going to speak for too long tonight. All I wanted to say is that it's very, very important for people to understand, for the Quinn family to understand that we support them so much here tonight. There isn't one of us. There isn't one of us who hasn't looked at the headlines and read the stories and watched the television and felt so much for that family over this past two or three months and, and years. And we have always said, there's, I'd love to be able to do something. Well, tonight we are doing something. 
We are coming together, and like the founding of the GAA, when some ordinary people, seven men in a room in his hotel in Tipperary, got together and created this prairie fire of an association that we have. There is no power like the power of people like we have here tonight to send out a very strong message. A, we want compassion for this family, and B, we want justice for this family. Thank you very much, Paul. Kind words and very well spoken. Our, our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, was born and bred in Cross Midland, County Armagh. Been involved in sport all his life. Played for a club and county for 20 years. Managed Cross Midland, the Three Hall Irons, and Armagh, the Sam in 2002. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Kernan. There's more people than I thought here. <laughs> These are all hiding up there in the corner. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to show respect and support a great family name and a great leader of the family, Sean Quinn. Everybody, I've known Sean for many years, and he always struck me as a very, very humble man. If you didn't know him, you certainly wouldn't know the empire that he had, that he's built up. But I must say, I've been sickened and saddened of what I've seen in the papers and been said about the family over this last couple of years. And it's great that the community is now going to stand up and say we're not happy with it. We want it to end and we want justice to be done. My uh, contribution will be short, but nonetheless I trust that it will be taken as being as sincere as anybody else's. It is wonderful to see such a magnificent crowd. It's only now from when I got up here that I can see, well, nearly the full extent. I can't see very far that way. I can see a good bit this way. And it is great to see such a response to the call to come out here and to protest against the treatment of the Quinn family. Now, Naturally, I have known Sean Quinn for the greater part of his life. I can recall that I first met him as a small schoolboy at a football match down in Kilesher in my own area. I was doing an umpire. Timo were playing, I think it was in a skillen. And Sean was there as a young lad. He hadn't started, he hadn't got his place on the senior team at that stage, although he got it very young in life. And he, uh, he asked me more questions about football in that hour or so that I, you know, I could never forget him after that. I knew, I knew Peter, of course, at the time, and I knew he was his younger brother, but I knew him, uh, I found out that he was a very inquisitive young fella, and that uh, I suppose it was the, the it, it was a, a signal and for the future entrepreneur who Sean Quinn turned out to be. As I said, this is a magnificent crowd here, but I doubt would it even put a patch on the number of people that Sean Quinn gave employment for for the last uh, almost 40 years. And that, I think, is a great, <laughs> is a great tribute to him. I would want to identify, of course, two with his son, Sean Jr., who is today lying up in Mount Joy Jail, and his young wife, or his, his new wife of a matter of weeks, is left on her own, as far as the state is concerned. I know she has her friends, and good friends everywhere, as the Quinn family have. But for him to be up there today, and others who are guilty, and it's known that they're guilty, and far, far more guilty of any uh, little crime or misgiving that Sean may have been. They haven't, have their freedom, and they are driving about and flying about, and they're untouched by the circumstances of the last couple of years. Again, I have to say that it has been an honour to be on a platform like this. I've been on a right few different sorts of platforms in my lifetime. 
although I haven't been on one for about 20 years <laughs> until today. But the, the speakers that are lined up, and that you've heard some of them, and more of them to come, I think I never ha have had such a platform of top speakers, national figures, in this country. And uh, I just finished by saying that for most of my life, I've struggled and fought against injustice, mostly of a different kind to this in my own county of Fermanagh. But this, I believe, is the greatest injustice that I have ever seen being uh, visited yeah, yeah. 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 I hope that this is the misery of the Quinn family will end and end soon. Thank you very much. tonight that you wouldn't all be able to speak so we drafted a letter on everybody's behalf from the community to the Quinn family. I haven't seen it before so bear with me. Uh, Sean and Patricia Quinn and family, Peter and Mary Quinn and family, we community solidarity with the Quinn family. Dear Sean, Patricia and family, Peter, Mary and family, we have watched in dismay and increasing anger at the way in which you have all been treated by the establishment in Ireland particularly in recent weeks. We who have known all of you personally over many years, who understand the immense contribution that you have made to our communities and county, are outraged at the actions of the state, the banks and the judiciary. We know that the media campaign that has been waged against you is completely biased, has been orchestrated by the bank and is wholly unjustified. We are all devastated by the ongoing imprisonment of Sean Jr and the apparent autonomy with which the bank is being allowed to act. The same bank that has destroyed countless other lives in this country through its illegal and corrupt practice. We can only imagine the mental torture and pain that you're all going through right now. We sympathize with Peter Jr. in his current situation and the worry and anxious an anguish that ha has been visited on you. We want you to know that you have massive and widespread support in our community, as demonstrated by our rally here in Ballyconnell this evening. We offer you that support now and in the weeks and months ahead. Please pass on our message to Son Sean Jr. and assure him of our continued prayers and thoughts. Yours in solidarity, the communities locally and your supporters, friends and colleagues throughout the county. yesterday that one of us should come here tonight and say a few words and uh, had I stopped to think about all of these people who I would be following I can assure you it wouldn't have been me I would have insisted somebody else be here but here I am uh, I'm here to say a few words on behalf of my sisters and my brother Sean um, we're all very grateful and, and appreciative for all of the support that has been extended to us. Uh, Daddy has always had a lot of loyalty and support from this area throughout his business career. And we're so grateful that that support has been extended to us, his family, in this, our time of need. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's come here tonight. I can't believe the crowd. And I'd like to thank every single person who has done absolutely anything to help us over the past two years. It means so much to us. Thanks so much.
We have a fantastic extended family, many of whom are here this evening. Uh, and I'd like to thank them for everything they've done as well. And I'd like to say a particular thank you to our cousin Peter, who has done everything in his power to help us as well over the last couple of years. And I'd just like to say, Peter, wherever you are tonight, thank you. I can't say too much about our current situation at the moment because of all the legal cases that we're involved in, but I would like to say that there has been a lot of speculation about what has happened in the past, what will happen in the future, and what should happen, according to a lot of people. I'd just like to say that we are looking forward to our day in court. We believe we will be vindicated at that time. We do hope that that will come to pass, however. Uh, as you may have heard this week, a receiver has been appointed over the assets of myself, my siblings, and my two brothers-in-law. And this means that we have lost now control of our financial affairs. We do hope that it does not culminate in the loss of our legal affairs. That is a concern of ours. We want our day, and we look forward to having our day. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Callum. Callum, we didn't ask Brawley because we only ask people that know who the, what they're talking about. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is, is local. Patricia Calhini is a housewife and a mother. She got involved in the saga as she felt that there was only one side of the story and the other side was not being told. She began the process by asking all the parties the hard questions and what she discovered shocked her. And ladies and gentlemen, if I can say that uh, we, were, we admired Patricia and Maureen, the two of them both in the Vincent Brown show the other night, they represented us excellently well. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Patricia Calhoun. It's absolutely wonderful to see so many of you here in your thousands. And let me tell you, if we are to obtain justice and basic human rights for the Quinn family, in this travesty, we will need every one of you. It's a sad day. Three years ago, who would have thought that our communities would be undermined and ravaged with, three, with 1,300 jobs lost to date. That's the equivalent of 13,000 in Dublin. We would all hear about it if 13,000 jobs were lost in Dublin. <laughs> who would have thought that the man who believed in and had the courage to invest massively in this area would along with with, along with his entire family, would be hunted down like wild animals. I was part of a delegation who met with the chairman of Anglo-Irish Bank, Alan Jukes, in Leinster House last year. And the fact that he chose Leinster House to meet us says an awful lot. He works in Anglo, but he chose to meet us in Leinster House. He said that a journalist had said to him, who would invest money in the back end of nowhere? Sean Quinn did not believe this was the back end of nowhere. And it's time that we sent out the message that we are not prepared to be treated like people from the back end of nowhere. <laughs> Sean and Peter Quinn did more for this country than any government. They never forgot their roots and the people from their community. And now they and their families are being held to ransom in an effort by agents of the state to prevent the truth being told. A truth that threatens the very core of the establishment.
We have a mother less than a mile from here whose only son is in jail. A young recently married man who has been penalized because a corrupt bank insisted on shoveling large sums of money at him and his sisters. And that was done so for the illegal purpose of propping up the share price of the bank. Let none of us believe anything else. The Quinn children never asked for, never knew about, and never benefited from this money. It is also alleged that their signatures were obtained months after the money was advanced. And amazingly, they were allegedly asked to sign documents stating that they had received legal advice long after signatures were obtained. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that that doesn't pass the smell test. It is also worth noting that our public interest director, public interest director, my foot, Alan Jukes, was allegedly in situ when some of this false documentation was put in place. Now we have Anglo, who have the audacity to pretend to be acting in the best interest of the taxpayer and the people of Ireland about to ramp up the bullying on a completely innocent woman, Patricia Quinn, by making her bankrupt. <coughs> Not long ago, I heard stories that Anglo representatives were outside the Quinn house at 12 o'clock on a Friday night, ringing the bell when Patricia Quinn was home alone. Is this the kind of country we want? And is this the kind of country we're going to accept? No. I say no. We have another mother in Fermanagh whose son is being branded a fugitive on the run. While the real perpetrator sits smugly in their cushy Dublin offices planning the next attack on the Quinn family. We have little defenseless and innocent children who've, whose lives have barely begun, also been scrutinized and targeted. And then there's Anglo, the elephant in the room, the greatest junk bank of all times, who now prefer to use the pompous title of IBRC. Make no mistake, IBRC is the same Anglo, and it is playing us all for fools. What's more, the new board appeared to be far worse and more reckless than the previous board, because they are gambling with our money. In a vindictive witch hunt against John Quinn that will cost hundreds of millions. Why, in God's name, is the question not been asked? How much has been recouped in this strategy? How much of our money has been spent? And how does this compare with what was on offer from Quinn? Instead, we're reading stories about what Sean Quinn's wife is wearing. The facts of the matter are, and I would urge any of you who are interested in the facts, and I suspect that every one of you here are, there are flyers up here, and I would ask you to come up here at the end of tonight and distribute those flyers far and near. The facts are, John Quinn invested in an Irish bank that was regulated by the financial regulator and supervised by the Irish government. He did so based on what we now know were fraudulent accounts that were presented as accurate. When he could no longer support the margin call, he was pressurized to put on the green jersey. For the good of the country, and let there be no mistake, Sean Quinn always wanted to do what was best for the country. Let's be clear. Anglo
no shoveled money at the Quinn family for their own benefit, not for the Quinns. <coughs> then we had Quinn Insurance being put into administration in very controversial and questionable circumstances. And time may very well prove that it was put into administration in error. Despite being conned by Anglo, the Quinn family made a firm commitment to repay all monies. Despite the question of the, illeg the legitimacy of 2.3 of that debt. The last thing the family wanted was for the people of Ireland to be burdened. Quinn representatives travelled the length and breadth of the country with the Quinn proposal, which would also have resulted in 1,800 new jobs being created in this area. They begged the government to accept 2.8 billion. But no, the powers that be had other ideas. They did not just want Sean Quinn removed from Quinn Insurance. They wanted him hung, drawn and quartered and everyone belonging to him. How convenient it has turned out that Sean Quinn has taken the limelight of what really happened in Anglo and who the real perpetrators are. <laughs> the cost to the people of Ireland and, that th and the fact that we are on our knees and being crucified was of no concern to the decision makers. What message does the fact that they threw two point eight, an offer to repay 2.8 million in the face of the Quinn family, what message does that send to struggling mortgage holders and budding entrepreneurs? Then on the 14th of April last year, when the petition, petition of 90,571 of us were being delivered to Leinster House and the Central Bank. Anglo, with the government's support, pounced. The Seas Quinn Group in a despicable, unprecedented and cowardly act. And what is amazing, they did this prior to the legitimacy of the debt being established in a court of law. Not many months ago, Anglo released a statement when they seized the property of an elderly couple. They stated, they only seize properties as a last resort and when the debt is deemed unsustainable. Let us be clear on this, neither the Quinn Group nor the Quinn family were insolvent. Yet Anglo seized a company valued at 4.3 billion as a first resort, not a last one. <clears throat> and still today, we are told the Quinn family owe 2.8 billion. Do they think we came down in the last shower of rain? Since then, they have tried every dirty trick in the book to make the Quinn family disappear off the face of the earth. They have taken case after case at an estimated cost of two million per week of our money for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is to stop the Quinn family taking a case against Anglo that threatens to expose illegality and corruption at the very heart of the establishment. Yeah. Anglo joined Sean Quinn to the big case, and now they have the audacity to spend more of our money in taking a case to prevent him from defending himself in, in a court of law. <laughs> Let us never forget, bullies can only survive if enough good people do nothing. There are enough good people here tonight, and we are not going to stand idly by. I made a promise to myself two years ago that if anything happened to any of the Quinn family as a result of the torment and persecution that they have been subjected to, 
I will not have their blood on my hands. And I suspect that you all feel the same way. <laughs> Last year, I was part of a delegation who met a prominent Dublin politician in Leinster House. And he asked, why are the local public representatives not jumping up and down about this? It's time to jump up and down. And, and not stop until all legal actions are suspended, until the legitimacy of the 2.3 billion debt is ruled on in the big case. It's time for us all to jump up and down and let the powers that be know that we will no longer let the Quinn family be offered up as sacrificial lambs. The Quinn family are still standing and I want the message to go out loud and clear to the decision makers whose salaries we are paying that if the Quinn family are no longer able to stand we will carry them. <laughs> this case is not going away. We are just getting started. And I ask all of you to follow the concerned Irish citizens on Facebook to hear the details of our next move. And rest assured there will be a next move. Finally, once and for all, and in summary, we demand that the alleged debt of 2.3 billion is dealt with now, period. Thank you very much, Colette. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dare I say it, dare I say it, that maybe if it goes to the, the loss, the, the money taken from them, the culminator of the loss of the legal affairs, would we get together? Could we, could, could we raise funds to support the Quinn family if it actually came to that? I think we would. I think we would. And that'd be, that's the message we should get out to the Anglo-Irish Bank and the government. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Hart is the current and most successful Gaelic football manager of Tyrone Senior in the county team. He has led Tyrone to three All-Iron titles, three Ulster titles, one National League and four Dr. McKenna Cups. Considered one of the best technicians in the game, Hart is admired both by peers and former rivals. The media have compared him to a statesman for willingness to unite divided communities in Northern Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Hart. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. It's not a nice place to be at the end of all these great speakers here, but um, I'm here, and I, I just want to, like all the other speakers, offer my support to the Quinn family uh, in the predicament they find themselves in at the minute. I think this has been a very powerful evening. It's been very enlightening because you do tend to get a particular side of the story and everybody runs with it. We call it the common currency and it seems to fit easy to what people want to portray that we should believe. But you know, we need to be more discerning than that. And it's great to have a night like this where people can tell the real truth and then we will be in a better position to make judgments for ourselves. Yeah. Rather than I have known the Quinn family for a long time too, Peter in particular, and I've got to know Sean in recent times, and I can only agree with everyone else. Most humble man, and all he wanted to do was to do as much good as he could for everyone else. And I think that's what we've been taught by our mothers and fathers when we were growing up. That the way you should go forward in your life is to do as much good as you can and as little harm. And I think Sean Quinn fulfilled that purpose very well in his upbringing.
He has created so much for the people of this area and the people of the whole con the country at large. Um, should we forget all that? Well, wh why should we not highlight that? Highlight the many families that he has helped grow and develop in this area and right across the whole country because of what he did, because of the risks he took, because of the bravery he had in business. And as he said himself, he's not afraid to say that he made some mistakes because the person who didn't make a mistake didn't make anything. So... <laughs> He's honest enough to own up to that, and I can't for the life of me understand why somebody with a track record like his in business, second to none in this country, and maybe further afield in Europe, and he put proposals, uh, we were told, before people to say he could sort this out, give him the time, give him the space, and, you know, why would you not believe him when he had done all that he had done before? He's the very thing you would say, please go, go at it, Sean, do it. Why didn't they give him that chance? Because he would have done it. So I think it's great to have a night like this. Uh, somebody says, you know, evil prevails when good people do nothing. And, you know, there's lots of good people here tonight, so evil won't prevail. So I think that's what you're about. You're good people. You know and respect what you've been given by Sean Quinn and his family. And it is payback time. It's payback time for Sean Quinn. He has done so much over the years. It is payback time. And let's not forget, you know, this is a big gathering here. But, you know, every one of us have lots of more friends, lots of more people we can pass on the correct message to. Take this leaflet with you. Make sure that people are informed of all of the facts, not the convenient facts. And then you'll be doing yourself and all of the people of this country a great service. So I'm asking you, make sure you take that home with you tonight. And again, all I want to do too is say is pass on my support to the Quinn family. I think you know decent people when you meet them. And you know when you're meeting the Quins, you're meeting decent people. So why should we not do what we can? So this has been a great night. It's been very informative. I think a lot of us know a lot more about what was going on than we did before tonight. And I think we should, we should study that, we should reflect on it, and we should make sure we spread that news to as many people as possible. So the next time there's a rally like this, this street will not shape it holding it at all. It'll be far too small for it. So, just like all the rest of the speakers, I want, I want just the Quinn family to know that they have lots of support throughout the length and breadth of the country, and any of us who can do anything for them, we're only too willing to support them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mickey. And Mickey, can I also say on behalf of the people in Ballyconnell, and indeed the, the home counties, and indeed the length and breadth of Ireland, our thoughts and prayers are with you and the McAreevy family, and we hope that for you too, Mickey, justice will prevail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you can just bear with me for a second, we have an awful lot of emails and texts coming in from people from GAA, people from business people. Uh, I have a list of names to read out, but honest to God, I, I don't think I'll start naming everybody out if, if you don't mind. There's some of them here today. If I start naming them out, I might miss somebody and that. But if, if I could read one, one letter that is after coming in, and it's a message from a businessman who you all know, and it's written in handwriting. I hope to God I can read it. At a time when Ireland needs its best people to help our country fight back against recession, it's important that we stand by a man that has done so much for our country in terms of employment and wealth creation. A self-made man who has been the inspiration for so many others to achieve in their lives. In this time of need, he has my full support and backing at all times. And this is from Michael O'Leary of Ryanair. <laughs> K. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Quinn. And Patricia Quinn. It might be a wee bit emotional for me this evening, so I'm not going to say too much. For for the organisers of this event, uh, concerned Irish business, concerned Irish citizens, to Moor Football Club, for Man G A, Cavan G A, the whole G A country, um, we have. Dozens of our Irelands here either managed or worked through. Uh, we we're, we're greatly appreciate the support you have given us, not only today in your thousands, thanks very much for everybody that, that arrived, but for the support for now for 28 months from when the Act was immediately put into administration to, in April, March 2010. The support is absolutely brilliant. The whole local communities, the whole of rural Ireland has been very supportive. I can see very good reason and all the propaganda has been built up against us over the last 28 months. It's very difficult for people to support us because there's a story told that's not a true story, but hopefully the more intelligent people from the country and you people understands what the position was and is that we always paid our way. I know Parik here, uh, he, he um, postponed his holiday for a few days in order to be here tonight. That goes to show you the sort of support we have in the area. Uh, for, for people like, uh, there's one special guest here I'd like to mention, uh, and I, I think he knows what justice is about, the lack of it, Mickey Hart. And I'd like you to put your hands together. I think he and his family and his son-in-law came through it with great dignity. I hope that we can come through it with half the dignity he did. Um, you should be proud of your family and all your friends. And I know, Mickey, that whatever injustice was done to you, I know the people of Ireland are not 99% behind you, they're 100% behind you. The staff of the Quinn Group for the last 38 years have been phenomenal supporters of mine. They've built up a great business. I get the credit for it, but I know that the staff here has been tremendously loyal to me, and I would just like to thank every one of them for that loyalty over that period.
We had at our peak, at our peak three, four years ago, with a million customers in Ireland, and there wasn't very many companies in Ireland with that number of customers. We had a million customers, and I would like to thank each and every one of them for that loyalty. <laughs> the, lo the local community in the whole, within 20, 30 miles of here, from any cabin border, up in the Leitrim, Longford, down in Tyrone, right, the whole local community has been extremely supportive of me. They allowed us to build factories. We had dust, we had smoke, we had hassle, we had traffic. We had lots and lots of things. And I would like to thank the local community and communities for their support over the last 35, 40 years. <laughs> to my own family, I would like a big... I would like to thank them big time. My brother, my two sisters, my wife Patricia, my four daughters and my son, uh, all my nieces, nephews, in-laws, outlaws, whatever you want to call them. The whole lot of them that have been extremely, extremely supportive of me. And I would like to say a special word of thanks to young Peter, who is getting a, a bad reputation this, this, this uh, weather, but Peter, Peter has been a huge supporter of mine and the families, and the Quins will continue to be the Quins, and we stand by each other. Yeah. That, that's all I have to say, just to thank each and every one. I would have very, very genuine. Thank you very much. Hopefully justice will prevail in the long term. Hopefully business will continue in this area, whether I'm involved or whether I'm not involved. I hope that there's a great community spirit here, there's a great entrepreneurial spirit here, that there's been a proven success story here. Hopefully it hasn't died and hopefully it can be revived. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Sean. And isn't it ironic, Sean, that the bank that broke Ireland took over the best company that this country ever had? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We would like to thank you all very much for coming and showing your support to the Quinn family. Our next move will be advertised. Uh, in the local press and, and on the radio and make no mistake about it there will be a next move this is only the start <laughs> this is only the start you think there's a crowd here tonight the crowd will get bigger and justice will prevail make no doubt about that if I could if I could finish off and I think we're finishing off if I could finish off just to ask our local parish priest, Father Jerry Comiskey, just to maybe leave us with a thought, just a thought, Father Jerry, if you don't mind, uh, maybe a, a small thought and uh, to guidance and direction and where maybe we should go from here. Okay, well, it's my responsibility to have pastoral care for people in Drumlane. And in the last couple of years, I've been with the Quins and the Four Courts in Dublin. And it has been a harrowing experience watching them being brought in and out of the Four Courts. Last Monday morning, I visited Sean Jr. in Mountjoy. And I'll visit him again tomorrow morning. And in all probability, I'll visit him several times during the weeks ahead. When I visited him on... When I visited him on Monday last, he was very much aware that I have a good sense of humour, and I know that he has a sense of humour as well. And when he entered into the small room that we were to meet at, he said to me, Father, there's one good thing about this. I didn't miss Mass yesterday. <laughs> he, being, being a businessman, of course, he quickly told me, that the priest forgot to take up the collection. 
At the outset, attention was drawn to Brian Darcy's many books, and we were told that one of his books is a little bit of religion, and another is a little bit of healing. And Ireland certainly needs both, religion and healing. In all of the circumstances of our lives, we ought to, to turn to God, our Father. Several weeks ago, I officiated at the marriage of Sean Jr. to Karen Woods. And on that day in the sanctuary in Dublin, I prayed with them that their marriage might be a shelter from the cold winds of the world. Little did we know that day, although storm clouds were certainly gathering, but little did we know then that I would so soon visit him a prisoner, unjustly deprived of his freedom in Mountjoy. We know from our experience these months and years that Ireland is gripped by fear. George, one of our earlier speakers, talked about marriages hanging by f the fingertips because of financial problems. We know that families are torn apart and that immigration has raised its ugly head again in these counties. There's dungeons of darkness for good people all over the place. And so we need God in our lives. We need religion and we need a philosophy that helps us to cope each and every day. George said that all of us ought to be active participants in our own recovery. And we know since we were children that we're all called to be dignified. We're all called to be preoccupied with just justice. All of us are expected to be compassionate towards each other, and all of us have a responsibility to inspire. And so for ourselves and for the Quinn family, most especially for Sean Jr., who's deprived of his freedom, and for Peter Dara, who's unable to come south of the border, we pray for them all and we ask God to accompany them in the days and weeks and months ahead. And perhaps as loud as ever we can, we might pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father. as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And when we depart from here, might we say to ourselves and to everybody that we meet, and might the message go out loudly from this assembly this evening, that all of us ought to be preoccupied with acting justly, with loving tenderly, and with walking humbly before our God. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord.